Okay, so I guess that my ring light is just officially broken. I don't know what I did to it. I don't know if it got damaged in the move. I don't know, but whatever mechanisms normally exist to keep the stand to my light like perfectly straight and firm have just they just have quit on me so now the weight of the light kind of gently pushes forward so I don't know if I can fix this with like super glue or like a zip tie or rubber bands or something but this is what I gotta work with so if at any point during this video I just start kind of sliding to the right um it's beyond my control and I don't know what to do oh my gosh <laughs> Also, there's a bug in the light. I'm gonna freak the fuck out. Oh my god. Hi guys, my name is Lacey. I'm Speakless and Fat Hips, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna dance because I still don't know what to do with my intro. I just turned the AC off so that I could film in my proper setup with my proper lights. So we're gonna power through this video because that sweat mustache hits real fucking fast. As you can see from the title. I am collabing with Teresa is Dead and I'm so excited to collab with Teresa because she is truly the only person on YouTube that I like truly stand with all of my heart. If you don't know who Teresa is, I don't know how you could not know, but she is literally everything I want to be in a person. She is so unapologetically herself, she just says whatever the fuck she wants, she just speaks her fucking mind, it's amazing. Teresa also starts all of her videos with a crazy story usually involving her life in New York City and it's just like the best content ever <laughs> on this platform hands down i also just like on a friendship level i truly love teresa we actually kind of figured out that we're only a couple hours away from each other so i'm really hoping that we get to meet up soon and do like collabs in person and maybe like explore the giant walmart that we figured out about during the 12 hour podcast and like all of these fun things but for now me and teresa are coming together to share with you guys our favorite basic bitch palettes and Teresa was the perfect person to ask to collab with on this video because she is someone who loves color and colorful eyeshadow probably as much as I do and she also like loves highlighter as much as I do so I'm like I mean I'm always rocking a lot of highlighter but I was like as I was putting on I'm like this is for you Teresa so thank you so much Teresa for wanting to collab with me I have so many palettes I want to talk about originally we were like oh let's keep it around like five and I have ten which is just the way that I typically go with these things. So I'm going to try to like keep my reasons why short and sweet, but I'm going to go through each palette. I should also say like what does a basic bitch palette mean? What does that mean for me? To me, it's like the kind of palettes that you guys probably wouldn't expect me to like. It's not the kind of thing that you would probably expect me to buy or that you would tag me in on Instagram or any of that stuff. They're like palettes that have mass appeal that tend to be more on the neutral side, that tend to be more wearable, that word that I hate. It doesn't mean that they're bad, obviously, because I love them. That's why they're in this video. And it doesn't mean that I'm calling you guys who also love these palettes basic bitches, because if that was the case, I would also be a basic bitch, which I probably am, who knows, whatever. I hope that you can take this all in good fun and see it in like the lightheartedness that I'm trying to make this video. I thought it was perfect, like I said, for Teresa, because she's similar to me when it comes to eyeshadow taste, has a lot of eyeshadow palettes. So I'm interested to see her picks. These are mine. The first one that I'm going to get out of the way real fast, because I don't think they sell this anymore. It might still be floating around the internet in various like minor websites. But I checked right before filming. This isn't on the Violet Voss website and it's not on Sephora, which is a bummer. This is the Taupe Notch palette. I think this was originally marketed as like a sister palette to their, I want to say Holy Grail palette. I don't own it. It's their like really neutral reddish tone one, like warm tone reddish one. This is a super cool tone taupey palette as the name suggests. I love this palette. I feel like I'm very alone in saying that, which is probably why it's not on the market right now. When it comes to neutrals, I always gravitate towards cooler toned neutrals because I just think they're so fun and you can goth them up so easily and make them not basic so easily. I definitely have my critiques with this palette in that I feel like it's really missing like a purple, something like really striking to kind of go with these taupey undertones. A lot of the mattes read pretty similar. And I also, just in general, I don't think Violet Voss palettes are worth the full price. I think when you can grab them on sale, they become worth the price, but full price, absolutely not. I really think, like I said though, a purple matte or like a deep red matte 
would have just like really made this a one-stop shop palette. I tend to reach for other mattes when I use this, but I love the undertones. I love the grunginess. I love the cool tone of this. This is such a beautiful palette to me, and I know there's like other palettes that hit these kind of notes, but this is one of the first ones that I remember, and this is the one that I reach for in my collection. Next up, I have to talk about this because it's currently back on the market. <laughs> this is the Too Faced Gingerbread Palette. I lost my damn mind when I saw this being released last holiday season because specifically around the time it was released, this was my jam. These like pinkish, spicy kind of colors that this really nails. I think to me, this is the best like themed palette that Too Faced has ever done because it's ginger spice or gingerbread and you think ginger spice. That's how my brain works. And these are really spicy colors. Like even though they're kind of pinky and neutral and brown, they have spicy kind of cayenne peppery, turmeric -y kind of undertones. Does that make sense? Like when you think of like a beautiful array of like loose spices, I feel like this palette hits those notes. I also just think in general, this is the best long form like tin palette that Too Faced has ever done. Like in the world of like the peach and the chocolate bar palettes and all of that, this is personally my favorite. I really love this. It doesn't smell like gingerbread though. It smells like vanilla, which is lame because they have a gingerbread scented lipstick so i don't know why they just didn't do whatever this is arguably very neutral i think if you ignore like this pink and this orange it's super super basic but i just really like it i think it performs the best like i said out of all two face palettes and if you wanted it it's back on sale which i find absolutely ridiculous as much as i love this palette i don't think you need to rush out and get it in their christmas in july sale even though it's august now i really truly think they were probably planning on like bringing it back in the winter but then found some extra ones and were like oh shit these are gonna go bad before we can get to christmas time so christmas in july like it just seems sus that this palette's back i don't know you don't have to rush out and get it wait for it to be on sale if anything because i think i used ulta points to buy this i think i wouldn't have paid full price for this otherwise because i think these tin palettes are run up like 50 dollars which I do not find worth it. But again, like the Violet Voss one, if you get this on sale, it's really nice. It's a great everyday palette. I'm really into that one. Oh my God, all the buggies in the apartment are like attracted to my big lights. We gotta hurry this up, oh my God. This is one that I think people might expect from me. This is the Orb of Light palette from Black Moon Cosmetics. It's very reminiscent of the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette, the original one, which I think is why I got it because we're all kind of phasing out our Kat Von D makeup at this point. Maybe you aren't. I don't know. I am. And this is just a very good, like, staple matte palette, especially for me because I tend to go for, like, yellowy, grungy kind of colors and reddish colors, so it's perfect for me. Another one that I swear to you is not worth the full price. I'm sorry. This is a great palette. I reach for this palette constantly. It lives on the top of my vanity so I can reach for it when I need it to get those kind of staple matte colors that I might be missing from various other palettes. And this is like the perfect transition shade for me, this middle shade, because it is just slightly deeper than my skin tone. So I can use it in the crease to start like any eye look. But again, I think I got this with Ulta points and like my birthday coupon, which was like $10 off anything. And that to me made this extremely worth it. Because again, this is a very expensive palette. And I get it because it's an indie brand, but like there's like so many all matte palettes in the world. And I'm sure everybody and their mom has like that staple all matte palette that they love and they reach for. But this just happens to be mine and the colors just blend really beautifully you can build them up to be super pigmented and it's just like those staple colors that like someone like me a gothy kind of bitch loves so that's why i like it but if you're not a gothy kind of bitch like me i think you can also appreciate this too because it tends to just be your basic mattes that you need to have in your collection getting down to some real shocking palettes for me i actually anti-hauled this palette whoops and then i i just like caved i think it was hannah smoky glow hannah who was like no you have to try this and i love it <laughs> this is the berries and cream palette from chris and dominique cosmetics it is actually really beautiful i regret talking shit on it i will say this hits a lot of like modern renaissance notes and i feel like we all have those kinds of color stories in our collections like multiple times over i know that i do so you definitely don't need this, but this is such a beautiful palette and what really stands it apart from like a lot of these other kind of berry toned 
palettes in my collection is that even though a lot of these shades read dusty, which is what I said in my anti-haul, I called this like a bubblegum yuck palette because I just wasn't feeling the tones of like purple on this palette. For some reason, these blend differently on your eyes. They blend like deeper and richer and more like true to the colors, I think. Not even true to the colors in the pan, but they're almost like richer colors once they're blended on the eyes. I don't know how to explain it other than that. I have very minimal complaints about this palette other than I wish there was like one lighter blue to go with this one darker blue. But other than that, this is so super soft and pretty. And this is actually a palette I used to wear to work a lot because it's kind of like a normal person palette in terms of Lazy World. I could not make this video without talking about the Queen of Hearts palette by Colored Rain. You can't even read my palette anymore because it's disgusting because I've abused this palette. This is one of my like true staple basic bitch palettes. This is something that like I know I can reach for and it's going to do exactly what I need it to do. It's very berry toned kind of like a lot of other palettes that I've talked on in this video. I need to like stop holding it like that. It's blinding me. But it's also just so richly pigmented and it also has those like vivid pigments that I kind of the gingerbread palette kind of has in a way. There's a ladybug on my light. Hello ladybug, you can stay. All the other bugs can go fuck themselves. Production assistant ladybug. The metallics in the colored rain formula and in this palette specifically are so out of this world blinding. I just like, uh, I get why we all raved about this palette. At the time, this kind of rode the coattails of the modern renaissance wave that I referenced earlier. So I feel like when it came out, it was perfectly in its timeline and makeup history, if that makes sense. Now, I think a lot of people who don't already have it would look at this and be like, got those colors already, don't need it. But the formula is just spectacular. They blend so easily, especially like this pink and this bright orange. They're so pigmented that they work on deeper skin tones, which I believe is the point of this palette. I believe it's a woman of color owned brand and it's designed for people of color. But even if you are pale like me, the colors just like start soft and work up very beautifully and it's just like a perfect formula. The mattes are spectacular. I think I'm repeating myself at this point, but it's just so pretty and you can make something super neutral or something super bright and I love that. I love versatility of basic palettes like that. This is like the basic bitch palette to end all basic bitch palettes. I, uh, oh my god, oh my god, Matt, Matthew, Matt, Maddie, Matthew, the biggest grasshopper I've ever seen is on my wall and I'm gonna try very hard to describe right now. Matt! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. How do you not see it? It takes up half the wall. Going to compose myself after that. I don't even remember what I was saying. This is the basic bitch palette to end all basic bitch palettes and I talked a lot of shit on this palette when it was released. I'm gonna own up to that right now. But then I saw it in store and I went, oh. <laughs> This being the Soft Glam palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills, which I feel like every makeup lover has this palette. Did I need this palette? No. Did I absolutely want it and fall in love with it when I saw it? Yes. I love that this is kind of has like a romantic tone to it. Like it's basics, but everything's kind of rosy and really soft and pretty. I also got it specifically because the Anastasia formula is so super reliable to me. I know if I reach for this palette for like a job interview or something else important that I have to do that these are just going to blend nicely and do what I need them to do and be, just be like a super soft pretty look. These shadows like never fail me. I seriously wear these every time I have to do something important. <laughs> it's just a beautiful palette and a beautiful formula and I think that this is probably a lot of people's go-to, a lot of people's staple palette. It's stunning. I'm sorry I talk shit on it. I'm sorry. It's such a gorgeous palette. The mattes just blend so effortlessly. They blend into each other so effortlessly. They play so well together. The metallics are nice and buttery and creamy and just soft and metallic and special. I love them. I absolutely hate the carpet packaging though because it gets fucking dirty. It's so nasty. I'm so happy that they seem to have knocked that off. Mm. Natasha did not a gold palette. Matt recently asked me what my favorite palette in my collection was and this was like a no-brainer to me. I get it. You're probably rolling your eyes right now. I also rolled my eyes when I saw this palette first release, like the promo images. I get it, okay? I get it. The textures in this palette, the undertones of the golds, this is the most beautiful palette ever. I'm sorry, it just is. It's just so grungy and green and mustardy and the textures of the foils are crazy unique 
an interesting and just like effortlessly grungy glam. I absolutely 1000% would run out and buy this again if I didn't have it. Like it's that level of I cannot live without this. I reach for it so often. It does not look like I do probably, but I've gone in on this palette. And every time I wear this palette, it's one of those where people look at me and they go, what are you wearing on your eyes? Because it's just so stunning. I don't know how else to say it. I don't want to swatch like every palette in this video or else we'll be here all day. But if I don't swatch the metallics, you're not going to understand what I'm talking about. Like, it's so good. Everything's just like sparkly and duochrome and interesting and like oh i it's i don't know you're probably seeing this and going no lacy it's boring it's a basic bitch palette it's a 120 whatever dollar basic bitch palette i get it i know are there other gold eyeshadows in my collection yes are there other basic kind of mustardy browns in my collection yes but this is my favorite basic bitch palette and this is it it's just so gorgeous and I know you could dupe out the vibes of this I know a lot of companies since this palette have kind of released their ode to this kind of color story but I think for me for someone who likes grungy shadows and grungy tends to be my neutral this is perfect it's spectacular it's like such a treasure especially because Matt bought this for me for Christmas so it's like a gift on top of just being this like creamy amazing delicious palette I just I love it I had to throw it in here do I think it's worth the price? Do I think you should go run out and get it? That's very debatable because of how luxury this is. And I do feel really icky, like, doting over something this expensive because I realize this is so unrealistic for so many people to have. Also, I know so many brands right now are coming out with really spectacular duochrome singles. That's like, a, moving towards like interesting textures, I think is was like what the beauty community is doing right now. So you definitely don't need to shell out this money to get this effect, but I have it and I appreciate it and I love it so much. It is such a beautiful palette. I can't say it enough. It's so beautiful. The Nabla Cosmetics Dreamy Palette. I've noticed that with a lot of my picks, there seems to be this like pinky romantic undertone to a lot of them. So I guess that's just what I like at the end of the day. Like it's really hitting me that that's something that I'm into. But this palette is really beautiful. I'm watching the ladybug crawl off the light. Oh my god, I need to hurry this up. This palette is so super beautiful and so soft and so blushy and I'm really into this formula. I know that Georgia swears that this formula isn't as exciting as the single shadows from Nabla. I would love to try the single someday. But for now, these mattes blend so lovely. Like I don't know how else to explain it other than they're just like effortless, kind of like the Anastasia formula. And we have different kinds of metallics in here because we have some kind of like typical metallics but then we have a really like sparkly gritty metallic like delirium up here and they just are so striking on the eyes and again I can make something really soft and really work appropriate with this but I can also amp it up and kind of goth it up so to speak and like darken the edges and make something really smoky and like dirty almost does that make sense like with these deeper colors and it's just pretty like I don't like I know I'm like the undertone to all of these palettes is that they're pretty. It's not so much like striking color, crazy color combinations, ridiculous. All of these palettes just kind of have this like pretty vibe, this kind of delicate vibe, like something that's so not who I am. I'm not a delicate person. I'm not like a pretty dainty kind of eyeshadow person. I know most people are. I tend to be like pile it on, smoke it out, grunge it out, blah, blah. but like I can make the soft looks with these and I can also grunge up the looks with a lot of these and that's why I like them. I noticed that Nabla is an Ulta now. That's exciting to me. They don't have the single shadows in Ulta though, which is a bummer. And I also don't think they have this palette in Ulta, which is a bummer because this is a good palette. They have the two like garden palettes and I've heard bad things about both of those palettes. So like the jury's out if I'll reach out and get those. I also kind of think their color stories are boring, but that's just me. I don't know. Let me know if you've tried either of those palettes, what you think of them. This palette is probably one that nobody knew that I owned. <laughs> This is the Love, Trust, and Fairy Dust palette from Tarte Cosmetics. And I kind of bought this right as I started to give Tarte a chance again after like being so done with them after how they handled the Shape Tape fiasco. I kind of have been warming up to their releases again. That's just me personally. You can make your own decision about that. And this was one of the first palettes from them that I saw and was like, I need that. But everybody else was like, boring, stupid, next pass. <laughs>
Again, I really didn't realize sitting down and picking all these palettes that they were all going to have this kind of blushy, pinky undertone to them. But I like this one because it's cooler toned on top of being more pink toned. I love the highlighter you get in the middle. And I just think specifically with my skin tone because I am like the fairest of fair, like pale ghost. Casper looks at me and is like, bitch, you need to go outside. Like I'm so fucking just white and pasty that these kind of pinky tone nude shades flatter my skin tone really well not the best formula i will say like not the most mind-blowing it's not like the novel shadows it's not like the abh shadows really like all most of the masks i talked about i think are probably for performance wise better than this but this gets the job done i just think the color selection is really nice and curated and pretty and like dainty but again you have those ways to kind of grunge it up which I appreciate. I love how the palette smells. Tarte always makes their palette smell kind of like cocoa powder. And I actually really love the outside. I think the name is cringy, but I really like this packaging. I like their round palettes. Sue me, I'm the only person on this earth who tends to like them. And also, this is not only still available on Tarte's website, but it's on sale for like $25. And I think that is a much more fair price to for the quality than what the full price of this is. I think this is like a $40 palette. 25 is like much more appropriate in my eyes. Like I said though, flattering for someone as pale as me, if you have deeper skin tone than me, I would probably stay away from this just because I don't think the shadows are as pigmented as a lot of the other palettes that I've recommended in this video so far. And the last one is the palette that I have on my eyes today. <laughs> Again, probably a palette that not a lot of people, if anyone knew that I had. This is the Through My Eyes I love Sarah E X ColourPop collab, and I have to be very honest with you, I have no idea who I heart Sarah E is. Sorry, I bought the palette for this beautiful fucking color story. I saw this color story and fell madly, deeply, head over heels, beautifully rush off and elope with me right now in love with this palette because I don't have a lot of things like this, despite the fact that I just held up like 10 other blushy tone nude palettes in this video. What the fuck is my actual problem? <laughs> For me though, I do feel like this kind of chunk of the palette, this like rosy kind of blushy tone part is very unique to a lot of other shadows in my collection. And when I first got this, I couldn't stop using it. It was like a problem. Like I've done some serious damage to this metallic right now. This is called Flex. It's the one I'm wearing on my lids today. Stunning, the green, stunning. The kind of bruisey blushy tones, Stunning. Something about this palette really reminds me of Beauty and the Beast, if that makes sense, because you get the rose kind of colors with the green. I don't know why. Like, I really, I feel rose when I see this palette. I also think you could easily dupe out the vibes of the Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette with this palette because of, like, this gold and this mustardy shade and the green and this green. Like, I feel like you can get kind of similar, like, a similar effect, especially if you're worried about mold. No tea, no shade. I love this palette so much. It's the one I'm wearing today and I did kind of lacy it up so to speak. Like I chose the darker metallic all over the lid. I did my heavy wing. I did a bright coral under the eyes. I did my white mascara. But you can make super soft delicate looks with this or you can make really interesting colorful looks with this and I love it so much. This is such an underrated color pop palette in my opinion. I think it's one of their best. The mattes just kind of like give me like nudie bruised vibes like when I was doing my crease work my eyes probably a little messy because it's like 11 o'clock at night right now and I rushed to do this video because I waited till the last second to film it what else is new but even like doing my makeup I'm like oh these colors are kind of bruisey my eyes look weird and then I put my glasses on and I was like oh okay this is a very soft look like I feel like I just accessorized the look so to speak to make it more ridiculous but this is definitely could be an everyday basic staple palette for a lot of people. Super beautiful. I love this so incredibly much. The ColourPop formula is always consistent for me. Like it's not the greatest formula ever, but it's also really good for the price, if that makes sense. Like it's not like mind-blowingly life-changing, but it's good and consistent and like more than worth the money. Does that make sense? Do all this, everything I say make sense? I think just cooler tone, pinky kind of blushy nudes just flatter my pale skin. I feel like that's why they tend to be my go-to. That's what I've learned doing this video. But anyway, those are all of my favorite basic bitch eyeshadow palettes. The palettes, like I said before, 
that you probably wouldn't expect me to love or that wouldn't seem like palettes that I would gravitate towards, the kinds of palettes that have mass appeal, the kinds of palettes that get anti-hauled a lot because we all have these palettes eight bajillion times over, but these are the ones that I love the most. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much, Teresa, for doing this video with me. I love you so much. I really hope we get to do a collab in person, like, very soon, because we got to check out that Walmart. Holy shit. <laughs> thank you guys for sticking with me as I kind of, like, figure out my content going forward. I know this is a makeup video. I do want to stay primarily a makeup channel, but I also kind of want to throw in other things. I have a lot of ideas. I'm figuring it out. I know I always say this, but trust me, like, I feel confident in my channel right now and what it's going to look like going forward. So I hope you guys stick around for that. If you liked this video, if you like collab videos, and if you like me, please hit like and subscribe. You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is also Spookless Fat Hips, to see what I'm doing when I'm not on YouTube. It's primarily a lot of plant stuff lately, sorry. I'll get back to makeup soon. But other than that, that is all I have to say. I need to turn the air on and get away from all the bugs. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys! <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe a grasshopper interrupted this production. How fucking rude.